Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav is an initiative of the Government of India to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of progressive India and the glorious history of its people, culture and achievement. This Mahotsav is dedicated to the people of India who have not only been instrumental in bringing India thus far in its revolutionary journey, but also hold within them the power and potential to enable Prime Minister Modi's vision of activating India 2.0, fueled by the spirit of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa is an embodiment of all that is progressive about India's socio-culture, political and economic identity. The official journey of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa was commenced on 12th of March 2021 and will continue for another 75 weeks celebrating our 75th anniversary of independent India and will end post a year on 15th of August, 2023. Today, we all have gathered here to celebrate this Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and further discuss about the crash barrier facility at Natrax. I would now like to invite Dr. Karupaya, center head Natrax, to welcome our dignitaries, speakers, and participants. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Tulika. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all the participants of this webinar on crash barrier testing. Uh, at the outset, uh, let me extend uh, a special welcome to two speakers from abroad, uh, Professor Ali Osman Atahan from ITU uh, Turkey and uh, Mr. Mike Desnes from USA. Of course, uh, Mr. Mike will be joining a little late. And of course, two, we have two speakers from India. Uh, one, Mr. Rahul Patel from IRC Delhi, and uh, our own Mr. Saga Bandre uh, from Natrax. Uh, in fact, uh, I would also like to welcome all the participants. In fact, uh, we uh, have received overwhelming response uh, for this seminar. Uh, you know, it has reached about 110 registration. And we are glad to share that, uh, of course, the maximum are from the domestic crash barrier manufacturers and uh, also from IITs, NITs, CSIR labs like IIP, SCRC, and the testing agencies like ARI, GR, ICAT, and the government organizations like KPWD, I mean, uh, Karnataka uh, PWD, Institute of Road, Transfer, Road Traffic Education, and uh, as uh, far from Australia as well. So we are indeed uh, very happy to uh, welcome all of you. In fact, that, uh, you know, the sort of participation we have had that also shows the importance of this uh, particular topic. Uh, well, as uh, uh, you all know, Azadi Ka Amrut Mahotsav is an initiative of the government of India uh, to celebrate 75 years of independence and to commemorate the glo glorious history of uh, its people, their culture and uh, their achievements, right? And there are various programs organized by different ministries under the government of India. And we at Natrax, uh, who come in the Ministry of Heavy Industries, are organizing this webinar on crash barrier testing. Uh, before uh, we invite all the speakers, I would like to give a uh, certain background of this uh, webinar. Uh, you know, of course, post-independence, our uh, country has attained a progress in many areas as diverse as, let's say, defense, agriculture, uh, the infrastructure in terms of road, power, or uh, IT sector, or the educational sector, or health and social sector, and all that. But, uh, uh, you know, as far as road safety is concerned, uh, of course, we are uh, lagging behind, I must say, uh, because I must quote uh, our uh, honorable uh, minister of uh, road transport and highways, Shri Nitin Gadkariji, you know, what he has said is that uh, the road accidents are uh, more lethal uh, than, uh, you know, the COVID pandemic. Uh, of course, he's not wrong because, uh, you know, if you talk about the statistics, especially, uh, let's say, uh, prior to 2019, if you talk about the statistics for uh, uh, one decade, uh, one thing is common, you know, like uh, on an average, uh, 4.5 lakh accidents uh, have taken place and there are about 1.5 lakh fatalities. So that means about uh, 415 deaths every day. You know, this is like uh, a jumbo aircraft crashing every day. 
So, you know, if an aircraft crashes, we can well imagine uh, what will be the uh, hue and cry and things like that. But then the road accidents, uh, they, they go unnoticed. Of course, uh, uh, it's going to uh, affect uh, all our relatives and friends who get affected. And, uh, and I must also make a mention that uh, as far as... Uh, Indian population of uh, vehicles are concerned. We account for uh, one percent of total number of vehicles in the world, but uh, we have a dubious distinction of, uh, you know, as far as uh, global debt due to accidents is concerned. Our share is about eleven percent, which is highest in the world. So this is something uh, very serious, and it's also serious because, uh, of course, as I said, you know, it affects uh, our relatives and friends. And not only that, uh, uh, it also uh, has a financial impact in the sense that if we talk about uh, the 84% of accidents, uh, you know, the people who die are from the working age group of, uh, let's say, six, 18 to 60. So that means from financial uh, uh, loss point of view, uh, somebody has accounted for, it uh, leads to about 6 lakh crores, and that's equivalent to about 3% of GDP. So it's really a huge loss. So, uh, of course, uh, we must be quite serious about it. And uh, as far as uh, addressing this issue is concerned, uh, there are three E's which are very, very important. Uh, the first E is about education. The second E is about uh, enforcement. And the third E is about uh, engineering, right? And when I say education, uh, basically, you know, if you talk about, again, the statistics, about 80% of the road accidents uh, primarily is due to driver's negligence. So that we can also say, you know, possibly they're not educated in the sense that, uh, you know, they overtake, then overspeed, and they violate the traffic. You know, of course, government is doing its bit uh, to make uh, people aware of that, but uh, this is something which, uh, again, needs to be reinforced. And uh, to reinforce that, possibly, you know, that enforcement becomes uh, very important. And uh, government, again, is taking a serious measures. For example, if you talk about... Uh, the Motor Vehicle Act launched by uh, uh, the amendment launched uh, or uh, issued by the government of India. You know there are uh, uh, huge uh, penalty measures imposed on the violators. You know that is how the government is also taking steps to curb uh, the road accidents, right? And uh, as far as uh, the next E is concerned about the engineering, where we are all associated with, and this engineering again can be divided into you know the vehicle engineering and the road engineering, right? And uh, of course, as far as vehicle engineering is concerned, there are a lot of technology features. And as far as road safety is concerned, uh, you know, it can be divided into two categories. One is the active safety, and second is the passive safety. Now, active safety, we all know, uh, deals with the technologies which lead to, let us say, uh, avoid accidents. Uh, you know, for example, the first wave, first wave of active safety technology is uh, in respect of uh, braking. That's, for example, anti-lock braking system. And also, the second, I mean, the next technology I could uh, highlight is uh, electronic stability control. You know, when you're going at high speeds, you lose control. So this ESC is one technology which comes to our rescue, right? So then the second way of uh, active safety technology is uh, about uh, the onboard sensors. Like, you know, we have uh, radars, cameras, uh, then GPS systems, laser, you know, these are the technologies uh, which are being used in uh, technologies like uh, ADAS, Advanced, Advanced Driver Assistance System. You know, for example, uh, we have uh, a simple uh, like a tire pressure monitoring system. And in fact, somebody I was hearing one lecture uh, uh, before yesterday, you know, uh, most of the people, uh, we don't uh, check the tires. Whereas in Japan, I understand, you know, they check the tires before they move on to the road. You know, so to help that, there's a simple, uh, you know, tire pressure monitoring system. Then uh, the technologies like, uh, lane departure warning system, or adaptive uh, cruise control system, or uh, autonomous emergency braking system, or uh, let's say the blind spot detection. I mean, these are the technologies which are uh, coming into play. And uh, next uh, category of safety is about the passive safety. You know, the passive safety deals with uh, technologies which, uh, let's say, reduce the impact of accidents, uh, either you know, during or after the accident takes place. The simplest uh, being, you know, the airbags or the seat belts or the uh, the deformation zones, for example, the bumpers, right? So likewise, these are the technologies uh, which are um, uh, useful to mitigate the consequences uh, of an accident. And uh, similarly, now the subject here is the crash barrier. 
So uh, it, of course, uh, again, reduces the impact of accidents. Uh, it mitigates the consequences of accidents because it absorbs energy and all that, right? And uh, of course, uh, as far as road engineering is concerned, uh, there are many other uh, measures to reduce accidents. Of course, I'm not an expert on road engineering. Of course, we have uh, Professor Ali and uh, Mr. Uh, Mike to talk more in detail. And of course, uh, our own uh, uh, Mr. Rahul Patel on, uh, from Indian Road Congress is also going to address. Uh, but uh, what I would like to now focus is uh, that, you know, uh, Ministry of Road Transport has recently issued a guideline uh, you know, which prescribes uh, that, you know, all the crash barriers before they are erected on the highways, they have to be tested and certified for compliance to either the European standard that is EN1317 or the American standard that's called MASH, that is American Manual for Accessing Safety Hardware, right? Now, these are the two standards uh, which have been prescribed by MORTS recently. But now, in absence of uh, uh, testing facilities, the domestic crash barrier manufacturers were going abroad, you know. And, uh, and of course, you can well understand if you go get it tested abroad, how much is going to cost and things like that. So uh, one of the uh, uh, manufacturers in Indore, they approached us. And that is how we then took the initiative. Why don't we try? and do uh, testing for, uh, you know, the, the testing of the crash barriers. Here I must acknowledge uh, the role of uh, Professor uh, uh, Ali Osman, who has been helping us uh, right from the day one in terms of uh, technical uh, guidance and support. Professor Ali, thank you so much. Thank uh, you, sir. <laughs> right. So uh, with this in mind, uh, you know, to pave the way for, uh, let's say, uh, testing in India before the product is manufactured in India. I mean, that was uh, a part of our initiative towards uh, uh, Atman Nirbha Bharat, you know. So that is how we have taken the initiative. Of course, uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Sagar Bandri, who is uh, leading this uh, testing, he is going to give a, a detailed presentation on this. And uh, of course, uh, uh, talking about other two uh, presentations, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we will have Mr. Mike, so he's going to talk about, uh, you know, how tested roadside safety hardware can make India's road forgiving. So this is a very important uh, presentation. So he's going to make an impactful presentation. We heard uh, some of his, uh, uh, you know, presentation yesterday. We were really uh, impressed uh, by the presentation. And of course, uh, we all know, uh, as far as uh, any development is concerned, uh, you see, uh, the, uh, every manufacturer is, is interested in cutting down the development time and development cost. So I think uh, we have uh, the pleasure of having Professor Ali with us. So he is going to talk about uh, numerical crash test simulations. Could it replace actual crash testing? You know, he's uh, going to talk, share uh, nuances of uh, virtual testing. And uh, of course, uh, as far as uh, road safety infrastructure in India is concerned, uh, it is uh, increasing. And of course, we all know the highways, uh, you know, the sort of uh, road network, especially with under uh, the dynamic leadership of our uh, minister, uh, the roads, uh, you know, 40 kilometers uh, per day and all that, that's the rate at which you're going. But as far as crash barrier uh, installation is concerned, I think there's only three to 5% uh, roads are covered with the crash barriers. So that means about 90, 95% scope is there for erecting crash barriers. But only question is when you erect the crash barriers, they have to be really safe, you know? So that is how uh, these crash barriers have to be tested as per the uh, Europe, European or the American standards. And uh, as I said, we have taken initiative to test the crash barriers at NATRAX, uh, the facility which has been created under the NATRA project funded by Government of India. I must also make a mention that uh, as far as NATRAX is concerned, uh, we have uh, uh, 14 uh, varieties of test tracks spread over 3,000 acres of land for comprehensive testing and evaluation of vehicles. In fact, I must also highlight, you know, uh, there are certain tests uh, in absence of such facilities. For example, now we can test uh, as high as 350 kilometers per hour uh, high speed, uh, in, in our high-speed track, which was recently inaugurated. So the point I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, for certain tests, people used to go abroad. Now we expect uh, the reverse flow in the sense that uh, people from, uh, let's say, uh, abroad, would, we expect the traffic to come to India as well. So that is how we are in our own way. 
are helping to attain uh, Atmanibha Bharat. And uh, that's uh, Mr. Mike. Uh, welcome, Mr. Mike. Uh, you know, he's uh, such a nice uh, gentleman. Uh, he's a veteran, retired from uh, International uh, Road Federation USA. As I said, you know, uh, I'm sure he's going to make an impactful presentation. And as I said, he's going to talk about how tested roadside safety hardware can make India's uh, road forgiving. So with all these uh, four presentations, I'm sure uh, you're going to have an enriching um, webinar. Uh, so without taking much ado, I wish uh, all of you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We are going to start with our session soon. Uh, as requested earlier, I request once again all of you to please write your queries in the chat box. We will get back to you at the end of the session. I would now like to invite Professor Ali. Professor Ali Osman is currently a professor in the Istanbul Technical University. He did his PhD from Texas A&M University and has an experience of more than 25 years. His areas of interest are digital modeling, transportation structures, engineering, transportation and traffic. He is also a, has an expertise in design, analysis and crash testing of road restraint system. He will be sharing with us uh, on numerical crash test simulations as all the tests start with crash test simulation only. Over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Elita. Let me start with my presentation, one second. Have to go F5, Alt tab. Now it's visible. I believe you can see my presentation. Any problems? Is it visible? Are you able to see my yeah, presentation? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, first I wanted to thank Dr. Karupia for his kind words and uh, introduction. Um, thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, this session, in this presentation, I'm gonna talk about uh, numerical crash test simulations, computer simulations of actual crash testing. And first of all, I wanna celebrate 75th year of independence of India. And it's a proud milestone indeed for, for the proud country. I would like to thank Dr. Korapia and Natrak's team also for organizing such an interesting and timely webinar. I wanna take your, uh, I wanna thank you and your team. This is an excellent opportunity to introduce uh, road safety, forgiving roads, crash testing, development of uh, road infrastructure, including crash barriers. I hope you will enjoy presentations uh, today and on behalf uh, and benefit from the traffic safety improvements in India. That's what I'm hoping will eventually happen. To give a historical background on computer simulations and crash testing, Actually, roadside safety has become an issue in the United States and Europe in 1960s. So the government wanted to test the barriers before they were put up on the highways. Uh, it started as an iterative process, basically build, test, and redesign and retest, and that was the only way to see the weakness, weaknesses and the flaws on the barriers. Physical experimentation, more and more tests, as the vehicles become variable, the test, the number of tests increased and the sizes grew and the speed and angle and the vehicle types uh, varied in time. So because of this reason, since 1990s, the government uh, introduced numerical stimulations. The United States government introduced first time numerical stimulations. And they said, we 
as researchers has to depend on the simulations more before actual crash testing. That's how it initiated. The first crash test of I know in Europe started in 1962. Those are called Sindel finger tests. And these tests were performed in Germany to evaluate steel barrier performances. 1962 technology required a test vehicle, a propulsion method, and some type of measurement methods. So basically the propulsion was when uh, it pushed the vehicle against the barrier at a certain speed and angle, the barrier was supposed to contain and redirect the vehicle and they recorded this event in 1960s and came up with some conclusions on the adequacy of the barriers. So they performed actually more than 100 tests at this field. Different type of barriers, as you notice. This barrier is a steel barrier with a large spacer, both sides. So it's a median barrier used in the central reserve of the road. This one is also a double barrier. However, the spacer was smaller. This is the test track, 1960s, and the vehicles were pushed with the propulsion and the barrier was installed at some degree, could be 15, could be 20, depending upon the test conditions. But this was the track and 1960s, they wanted to find out how the barriers would perform the same barrier as you notice with, with a smaller kind of uh, car impact. So they evaluated many, many situations, many, many barriers. This one is a cable barrier, same type. Uh, this barrier type doesn't exist in India as far as I know at the moment. However, uh, it's a fairly flexible and uh, dependable barrier. It uh, has many advantages over other barriers, which we can discuss later. So some tests were successful, some tests were ended up failing. So they wanted to find out why it failed and they redesigned the system, retest the system. And this was an iterative system. It's called iterative systems. It spent a lot of time, a lot of money, and it was based on the judgment of the engineer who designed this barrier to make modifications. So they thought that the post spacing was too much or the material properties weren't sufficient or the design had some flaws. So they wanted to change each parameter and test it again and again. This would cost a lot of money and a lot of time. These were the barriers from 1960s, which actually are still in use in many countries in around Europe. This is a standard type of a barrier currently in Turkey. There, there have been, this barrier has been in use for the past 20 years in Turkey and many more, many more tests. In the US, in year 1991, Federal Highway Administration decided to provide this Alastina code, which is that time it was Dyna 3D, to research institutions. So they said, let's use this software in universities and research institutions to uh, evaluate crashworthiness of uh, safety hardware, including barriers, crash cushions, or, you know, all other type of hardware. And Federal Highway itself developed some models to be used in this uh, Elastina code. And National Crash Analysis Center was established in 1993. This was a big boost in the development of models and vehicles and simulations. Research contracts were given by the government to universities and research institutions. They provided some budget and they said, go ahead and use these 
for the development of finite element models. That's how it initiated, actually. Texas A&M University, which has uh, uh, become a center of excellence in 1997, I was doing my PhD at that time when this uh, grant arrived in Texas Transportation Institute. They also provided uh, University of Nebraska at Lincoln and Worcester Polytechnic Institute for these three universities and ARA and Battelle uh, research institutions as well. So government initiated and provided the money to the institutions just to make Alas Dina to uh, become widespread and acceptable. And of course, research institutions and universities started working on models and crash testing and finite element analysis. First thing they need was the vehicles. So crash test standard specifies that a barrier or a roadside safety uh, hardware should be tested under standard conditions and standard vehicles. For example, a 900 kilogram passenger car called 500C has to impact a barrier 20 degrees at 100 kilometers per hour. And this is called a standard test in European crash test criteria. And likewise, in the US criteria, this is an 1100 kilogram vehicle, passenger car, so on and so forth. And you had pickup trucks for the US. In Europe, we don't have pickup trucks. Instead, we have larger sedan type of passenger cars or trucks and buses, single unit trucks, bigger and bigger and bigger vehicles. So people started developing models. These are the very early models. Uh, we can tell by looking at the models, they look funny at the moment. However, in that time, in 1990s, early 1990s, these were doing a pretty good job to predict the crash test performance of barriers. Currently, of course, models are much better and validated. And uh, now they are used with much more uh, confidence at the moment. However, from 1990s, to 20, 2020s, it was like 20, 30 years of experience uh, built this models. In the Europe, in the US, so the bus model, truck model, uh, big truck model, tractor trailer model, and also tractor semi-trailer model. Depending upon the country's vehicle fleet, we're not haphazardly using these vehicles. We're not using this truck in the European crash testing, because this is an American truck and doesn't exist in Europe. So in Europe, we're using different type of vehicles. For example, this truck, this bus, and the, the truck, pickup truck, also doesn't exist in Europe. So it is a standard test vehicle for the US. So I will get back to this details at the end. And Mike, I believe, will uh, shed some light on this issue of vehicle selection in the standards and applicability of, for example, an Aishar truck used in India may be different properties than the European trucks. So these details need to be discussed in uh, further. So starting 1990s, of course, models were primitive in the beginning, and now it's getting much more complex and better qualities of for example, a tire model. Would it have a damage? Would it uh, blow the tire during a crash test? And likewise in the simulation, such and so on and so forth. So the models of the vehicles is step number one. And the, the second step, important step, is the designing of the barriers or the roadside uh, systems, which called vehicle restraint systems in the US. Uh, in the Europe and in the US, it's called safety hardware. It's the same thing. It's the uh, structure that is placed on the road that would prevent prevent um, fatal crashes, reduce the the outcome of a of a crash or an accident by absorbing the energy, as Dr. Karpia um, uh, explained. So. 
Designing of barriers, rigid concrete median barriers, portable concrete barriers, steel barriers, sign supports, mailbox supports. Remember all these structures are placed on highways and there is a potential a vehicle would hit these. If you put a concrete barrier on the side, yes, a vehicle lose control and hit this barrier. We wanted to know what's going to happen when it hits this barrier before we place them or a crash cushion, where to use it, which one to use it and how to use it, such and such. And guardrail transition. These, some of these uh, structures or sy systems are now an advanced topic for India. However, my, my prediction is in few years, these are going to be common practice in India also. This is how the design of hardware started. So this is actually a wooden a guardrail post and a wooden spacer on a W-beam barrier developed by WPI. And, and this is how the designs were evaluated. So WPI performed a full-scale crash test before or after the simulation to validate the model because the main question about finite elements is whether it is accurate to represent real life impacts. So this is a good example of vehicle hitting a barrier, containment by the barrier, deformation by the barrier, and finally redirecting the, the vehicle. And we would like to make sure that both videos show some similarities. And more uh, barriers were developed. This is a barrier uh, we developed with our team uh, in ITU. This is an end treatment, basically to protect trees along the highway. And this is a short barrier, actually, a symmetrical barrier. This is used to prevent vehicles from entering a dangerous area behind the barrier. So this is an end terminal designed to protect uh, rigid objects behind the barrier. Likewise, this on the left is a bullnose median barrier to protect a column or a pier that is located at a median. So inside of this uh, steel barrier, there might be a big tree or a column barrier. On the right is another, uh, I believe uh, a wooden round wood barrier with a spacer uh, located in pavement mo strip area. Many more models developed. Uh, this is a sign support, a uh, breakaway sign support, of course. And on the right is an energy absorbing terminal for the tri beam or a W beam, depending upon the situation. This is a motorcycle barrier.